you, Dennis. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well today. Um, once again, John DePaula with Northeast Financial based out of Cranford. Once again, we're the largest independently owned and operated uh, financial advisory firm in the state of New Jersey. And uh, we specialize in, in, well, we're a full service brokerage handling all areas of the investment and insurance space. And uh, once again, I specialize with people like myself who are that uh, millennial high income earner, white collar worker. So um, to just dive right in and to give you a little bit of insight in terms of the millennial buyer, because um, as we all know, millennials have overtaken the market in terms of the largest percentage of the workforce, as well as the largest percentage of the voting base. So while what I'm talking about might only be relative to myself and Candido here, um, I really want to focus in on the buying habits and the overall perspective of this group um, as a whole. Um, because at the end of the day, all of you are going to be working with millennials in some capacity, whether that be personally or as the representative for an organization that's making these purchasing decisions. Um, so when it comes to the COVID uncertainty, once again, just to really specialize who this group is, um, the group uh, their birth date ranges from 1981 to 1996. So being a millennial born in the very early 90s myself, I quite often get confused with the generations, I believe it's X or Z or whatever the case may be, um, which happens to be the late 90s and early 2000s. So unlike that generation who was literally born and bred through technology, um, technology really started to boom as I was reaching that high school years myself. So um, the millennial group itself is the most diverse group ever as opposed to previous generations, okay? Once again, as I mentioned, uh, the millennial group is the largest portion of working adults today. And because of that, due to this COVID uncertainty and the massive job losses we've experienced today, uh, millennials are the largest portion of working adults with the highest rate of job loss, okay? I'm sure those factors are correlated, um, but obviously that's had a huge impact on the millennial um, group. And prior to the COVID uh, pandemic here, the millennials have already were facing a crushing student loan debt of 1.5 trillion, which is just an unimaginable number. And a large amount of that is federal loans, which luckily for um, people that have federal loans, they aren't collecting any interest and no payments are due until September. Uh, according to the federal government due to the pandemic. So while you're given a good break here, a little pitch for myself as I unfortunately do have to work with student loans quite a bit, it's a great opportunity now to really dive in and take a look at those and see how they could be restructured with either a private lender or the federal government to really minimize the amount you're paying every month, but also maximize how you're able to pay that down most efficiently and also still able to save. And because of that crushing student loan debt, Okay, and the increased cost of living that we've all experienced, I'm sure a, a lot of you can attest um, that the cost of living, especially in the New York, New Jersey area has ever been increasing. Um, because of that, the millennials have delayed life events, major life events, such as marriage and buying homes. Okay, so um, the average home buyer in 2009, I read was age 37 and 2019 was 48. So just in that 10 year span, um, we've seen a drastic decline in home ownership at a young age. And because of that, within the COVID uncertainty, there's no stability or built-in equity that millennials would have obtained through home ownership at an early age. Um, another challenge prior to COVID and now during COVID is the millennial group is both caring for not only their own children, but their parents, both financially and physically, um, as their parents age, enter retirement, or are already in their retirement years. And we see baby boomers today who originally started out with um, pensions and long-term plans that really built for success as those pensions started going out of the marketplace and 401ks started entering the marketplace. People just by nature didn't save enough as well as the market volatility we're seeing a lot of baby boomers struggling and thus the millennial group is not only trying to cater for themselves in a poor, um, what was a good economic state until this pandemic, but also caring for their parents and children once again. Um, 
And then as I mentioned, millennial, only 7% of the marketplace offers private pensions as opposed to 70% in the 80s. So there's less stability within jobs and obviously no long-term pensions which require millennials to become a uh, more self-sufficient saver in that aspect. Also, they're experiencing with this pandemic, which I really wanted to focus on, a slower job market and growth as people are hoarding cash at an all-time high um, with all due respect because of the uncertainty that we're now facing. And because of which, ultimately, millennials are saving more than ever and creating that emergency funds with which most people, unfortunately, do not have. And their overall economic outlook for the future of this country, as well as themselves, is a pessimistic one as opposed to um, baby boomers and prior generations, which is sad and unfortunate, but it's the world we live in right now. And I do believe it's temporary. So with that said, um, the overall impact it's had on millennials and their buying decisions is it's taking a lot longer to make those uh, more significant purchasing um, decisions, if that makes sense. Makes ton of sense. So that's it for me on that. Uh, any questions, guys? Those are pretty staggering numbers. I never heard them like that. It's yeah, we've always heard about how like millennials change their their buying habits and yeah. the whole thing. How they don't want to own anything, uh, you know. Hence the rise of like Uber and Airbnb and rentals. And uh, I guess this is the other side of that uh, coin. But it is interesting that they are saving. I mean, you always hear people are not saving. This it sounds like this group realizes their fate basically and and are saving. Yeah, they seem to value they, they value the cash and the savings <laughs> aspect of it as much as they can, I guess, outside of the uh, the debt, the right. the tuition debt. Excellent. Well, thank you, John. That was excellent.